Hey, this is Anthony Cesari with SuccessForYourSongs.com and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can write lyrics for your love song in three steps. Now, I'm gonna be showing you an example in the song, Our Love is a Work of Art. So I've got a link for that uh, on the upper right-hand side of the screen. So you can click that, check it out, and then come back because I'm gonna be talking about some of the stuff in that song uh, as an example. So pause this, watch that, and then come back and we'll talk about it. Okay, so if you've done that, uh, let's talk about step number one, which would be uh, to start with the title. Basically, your title is gonna be your overall idea. So if you're looking to write a love song, you probably have an idea uh, in mind about what you want to write that song about. And if you're not quite there yet, you just know you wanna write a love song, some things to keep in mind is, or some ideas to keep in mind, uh, maybe it's gonna be the name of the person that you wanna write this song about. Um, maybe it's going to be a characteristic of the person that you're writing the song about or a characteristic of your relationship in general. Another thing could be a metaphor, uh, either for the person that you're writing about or the relationship in general. So in, uh, we were talking about our love is a work of art and that's an example of, uh, a metaphor that's being used. So the idea there is that, uh, there's a comparison. Uh, you know, two things sort of getting smashed together uh, and being forced to, to look at the similarities between them. Um, so that's how you can make a, a metaphor. So really the sky's the limit as far as what you want your song to be about. And again, remember this, uh, your overall idea and your title are gonna go hand in hand. It's very likely that they're gonna be the same thing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the only things I would say to avoid would be super vague terms. Like if you wanted to call your song, I love you, it's been done before and you know, it's not that you can't do it, but you, it, it would be nice if you had some kind of uniqueness uh, to your song and that's certainly gonna start in its title. So just keep that in mind when you're coming up with your title. Before we move on to step two, if you have not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel, please click that little subscribe button in the lower right hand side uh, of the video and also click the all notifications button so that you get updated when our latest videos are released. And if you're looking for a lot more techniques for improving your lyric writing, I've got a couple of free cheat sheets for you that you can download in the upper right-hand side of the screen. So grab those if you haven't already. Okay, so let's move on to step two. Step two is gonna be to plan the structure uh, of your song. Okay, so there are a couple of different uh, common structures uh, in songwriting that you're probably already aware of. Uh, I would say three of the most common Actually, I should start with the most common is the uh, A, B, A, B, C, B song structure, which is a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge structure. Um, another one that you could do is an alteration of that, which is just A, B, A, B. It's the same thing, but without the bridge. Uh, and another one is an A, A, B, A, which is a song that doesn't have a chorus at all. Instead, it uses a refrain. Uh, that's a, a structure that the Beatles and Billy Joel have used a lot. Uh, also common, but not as common as the uh, verse chorus, verse chorus, uh, bridge chorus. So uh, you might be thinking like, why would I need my structure yet? I'm just looking to write lyrics. We're not really talking about writing the music for the song in this video. Uh, but the reason that's gonna be important um, is because you're gonna, in the same way you started with a title, which was your overall idea, now you're gonna be planning out the idea for each section of your song. Um, and since there aren't too many different types of song structures, you don't have to worry too much if you pick the one that you didn't like. You can always change that, uh, especially like if you picked an, uh, a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Um, it's easy enough to then add a bridge and chorus to that later. Uh, the only one that would be a, a lot different would be if you went with the, the song that had a refrain, the A-A-B-A. -A. But, um, you know, basically you're just deciding if you want a chorus here. So once you decide on your structure, uh, you're going to figure out what you want each section to do. So in Our Love is a Work of Art, that's uh, this common structure that I was talking about, A, A, or A, B, A, B, C, B. So that's the structure for this song. And now the idea is that we're going to uh, plan out the, um, the idea for each section. So as I said, the chorus basically mirrors what the whole song is about. And that's also what your title is. So all those things tie together. So that makes this part easy. Your chorus just becomes basically your title. So that's why step one was starting with your title. Because now we know what the overall idea for the chorus is. So now you, so 
I mean, by looking at this, you know, half the half of what we're trying to do here is done already. So now it's just deciding um, how the verses and the bridge are going to set that up. So in this song, uh, in Our Love is a Work of Art, what I've done with that one is, again, this was a an idea that was a metaphor. So I, the, throughout the song, I was trying to make the comparison um, between love and and art. Uh, so the first verse was about uh, the initial inspiration. So that whole verse starts to compare um, things that happen when you're falling in love to being inspired for an idea, like if you're writing a song. Uh, so if you stopped and you know read through these lyrics, you'd see that kind of language making that comparison throughout this verse. So that's what verse one was about. Uh, in the second verse, we don't want to keep going with the same idea that can make your lyrics uh, come off as kind of stagnant. So in the second verse now, it's about um, putting in the work. Uh, so again, this is another thing that happens in art. It's not just all inspiration. It's, you know, if you want something that's going to be good and doesn't just come, you know, from the top of your head and that's it. So I'm making the comparison by saying that, uh, you know, mean, meaningful relationship happens when you put in the work uh, as it does in art. So if you, you know, stop and read through the lyrics of verse two, you would see that kind of language starting to happen throughout this verse. So again, that both of those verses had an idea. So if you listen through uh, this whole song, you heard that the bridge now was sung from a female perspective uh, because the song's a duet. And, uh, you know, if you've heard me talk about writing lyrics for a bridge before, uh, you've heard me mention that the bridge is from usually a different perspective from what the verses are, uh, because if it sounded the same as the verse, um, or I'm sorry, since it sounds different from a verse lyrically, it should be different as well. Uh, so in this case, it's, it's a literal different perspective by having uh, the female part come in in the bridge. Um, and basically, the bridge here uh, kind of recaps um, what the verses are saying. But it's sort of doing it from her perspective. So it is different in that sense. It's sort of like, you know, uh, she agrees with the sentiment that I was singing about in the verses. So then you get this um, alternate perspective of that in the bridge. So if you if you paused and read through the, the bridge lyrics, uh, you would see that happen there. But now you can see that, you know, we have this overall outline to our song here. Uh, the verse has an idea of uh, initial inspiration and how that's going to tie back to, you know, or how that's going to make the comparison between love and art. And then the chorus says our love is a work of art and expands on that idea a little bit um, in, in its lyrics. Verse two talks about putting the work in uh, in a relationship and compares that to putting the work in in art. Uh, then the chorus again highlights our overall idea and then the bridge sort of uh, is the the female interpretation of what the verses were saying from her view. So you can see uh, how it's looked at differently in all the sections that lead up to the chorus. So now we've got a big chunk of this thing out of the way even though the only actual line that is written at this point is the, uh, the title. Um, but it's clear what we want to happen in this song. So the third step here is to start filling in your lyrical detail. Now this is gonna be easier for you than if you just were sitting down to write the song from scratch, because again, we have our, our structure and our, our blueprint laid out for this song. Um, but some things that you do want to keep in mind because you do have to actually go through and write the details of the lyrics. So keep in mind the idea that you're going to use a lot of um, concrete imagery. A great way to do that is by uh, using or referencing the five senses and really engaging people. Um, because the more vague you are with your language, the less people are going to relate to it. The more you can use the five senses uh, and use imagery in that way, you can really start to pull people into your story. And this is especially true in your verses. It, your, uh, your verses, you really want to get into the details of the words. Your chorus can uh, be a little more general uh, because it's sort of highlighting the overall concept of the song. So you don't have to worry about that as much there, um, generally speaking. 
But you do want to start to think about how you can engage, engage the senses. Let's just take a look at a couple of lines, uh, one of the verses of this song, uh, so that you can see what I'm talking about. So in this line here, uh, the beats of our hearts seemed in sync. So that's um, engaging, it's really beyond the five senses, but that starts to engage like a, a sense of uh, an organic sense, like your relation to your own body and what's happening within your body. Uh, so that's another thing you can do outside of the five senses. Uh, so that line does that, and then it talks about, you know, a beat, the beats of our hearts seemed in sync. So that's sort of, you know, that's tying back to the fall in love idea, uh, because it's the idea of it happening together for me and for her. Another place you could see this kind of imagery is what happens in here. Um, or sorry, in here. If a crack in the dam's the initial sign of the force from the water, it can't confine. So now that dam uh, metaphor, dam metaphor, that uh, that's starting to you know paint a picture. That's something that you can visualize, uh, and it's even talking about the force from the water. So that's something that you can feel also. Uh, this line's a little more vague. That was my excitement when meeting you. But since it's already, already led up to by something that is more visual, it's okay there. If every line was about, oh, I was so excited, then that doesn't work. But if you sort of sprinkle that stuff in, it could be okay. Um, and then this line here, I was cracking a smile the entire time. A visual thing that relates back to the crack in the dam. So that crack idea um, takes the dam idea and then puts that back into, you know, what was going on inside of me. So that kind of visual stuff can help draw people into your story. So once you're taking your, your plan that we talked about in step two and getting into the details of your imagery, think about stuff like that. Think about those kind of details, engaging the senses, um, you know, using that kind of metaphor and imagery to draw people into your story. Um, and before you know it, you'll have lyrics to a love song that will uh, really make sense for you and resonate for your audience and hopefully whoever you wrote it for. And you don't even have to be writing it for anyone specific. Uh, you know, songwriting does not have to be biographical all the time. If you have a good idea for a story and you just want to lay it down, go for it. So hopefully that information helped you out. If you'd like to hear this song again, I've got a link for it right on the screen here and you can even uh, save it or stream it. And if you'd like a lot more information for improving your lyric writing, I've got a couple of free cheat sheets for you that you can download on the screen here. And finally, if you have not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel, you can stay updated on our latest songwriting videos by tapping our logo on the screen. Thank you for checking this one out.